Good morning. Today's lesson is 7.9. Identify equivalent expressions. Our essential question, how can you identify equivalent algebraic expressions? Let's unlock the problem. Each train on a roller coaster has 10 cars, and each car can hold four riders. The expression 10t times 4 can be used to find the greatest number of riders when there are two trains on the track. Is this expression equivalent to 14t? Use the properties of operation to support your answer. So what is one property of operations that you could use to write an expression equivalent to 10t times 14? Well, you can use the cumulative property of multiplication. Next, let's determine whether 10t times 4 is equivalent to 14t. The expression 14t is the product of a number and a variable. So let's rewrite it, 10t times 4, as a product of a number and a variable. So if we use the commutative property, then we have 10t times 4, which should equal 4 times 10t. And if we use the associative property, okay, then we would have 4 times 10 and then it, we would have the times t on the outside, because the associative property, remember, we're just kind of moving over parentheses. If we multiply with n the parentheses, then 4 times 10 is 40. So if we compare the expression 40t and 14t, you've got to think, 40 times a number, that's not equal to 14 times the number, except when the number is 0. So to check by choosing the value for t and evaluating 40t and 14t, you're going to write the expressions. So if you write the expression 40t, so use 2 as the value for t. So let's say I'm going to put in a 2. Instead of having a t, I'm going to put that in a 2. So 4 times 2 is 80. And then if I do the same thing over here, I use the value 2. 14 times 2 is 28. So that is definitely not equal. The expression t or 10t times 4 is completely different than 14t, so they are not equivalent at all, because 80 is very different than 28, yes? Use properties of operations to determine whether the expressions are equivalent. So 7y plus a parentheses x plus 3y parentheses, and 10y plus x. So the expression 10y plus x is a sum of two terms, which is 10y and x, right? So rewrite 7y plus and then parentheses x plus 3y as a sum of two terms. So if you use the commutative property of addition to rewrite them, you would get 7y plus, and then you have the x plus 3y, or 7y plus 3y x. Okay? So if you use the associative property to, to, uh, to group your like terms, you would combine the, the like terms which is the 7y and the 3y. So we're going to combine the 3y and the 7y, right? So we're combining these two terms, and then we'd have plus the x. So 7y plus 3y is 10y plus x. The expressions are equivalent, right? Let's look at the next one. So we have 10, and then we have the in parentheses, we have the m plus the n, and then we're also trying to compare it to this other expression 10m plus m. So we're trying to see if these are equivalent. So first we're going to use a distributive property. So remember that's where you take this 10 and you multiply it times the n and then you multiply it times the n. So we have 10 times m and we have 10 times n. And I multiply within the parentheses. This one is 10m and this one is 10n, right? So if I'm going to compare the expressions 10m plus 10n and 10 m plus n, the first terms of both expressions are uh, 10m, right? But the second numbers are different because this one is just n, oops, this one is just n, and the other one is just m. So they are going to be different.
true way to compare them, though, is to go ahead and substitute in a number for m and substitute a number in for n. So for 2, if I use that as my value for m and I use 4 as my value for n, so there's my m, and I'm going to use 2 as its value, and for n, I'm going to use 4. So again, for m, I'm going to use 2, and then for m, I'm going to use 4. So now I'm going to use order of operations. We have 10 times 2, which is 20. We have 10 times 4, which is 40. And then we're adding the two of them together, and 20 plus 40 is 60. Now let's look over here. We've got 10 times 2, which is 12, plus the 4, which is 16. So 60 and 16, very different numbers. So they are not, not equivalent. If they were equivalent, they would be the same number, right? All right, let's do a couple of sharing tricks. So here's my expressions that I'm evaluating. I've got 7k plus 4 plus 2k, and I'm trying to compare it to 4 plus 9k, right? So I'm trying to see if these two are equivalent. So if I rewrite it using the commutative property of addition, then I have 7k plus 4 plus 2k. So all I'm doing is I'm combining my like terms. I'm moving them together. So I've got 4 plus 7k and 2k. So it allows me to easily see that 7k plus 2k is the 9k, or I'm sorry, 7k, and then I've got 2k, and those two together makes 9k. Sorry about for my sloppy writing there. This would be a 7 and this would be a 2. So we've got 4 plus 9k, and if you look, that was my other side, 4 plus 9k. So I know that these are equivalent, right? So it's basically rewriting. The other thing you can do is you can, you know, plug in a number. So like, for example, on this one, if I'm doing 9a plus 3 and I've got 12a, pick a number that's easy to multiply that you like. So let's just say a equals 2. So that means I'm going to put in a 2 right here. So that's 9 times 2, which is 18, times 3, right? So we've got 18 times 3, okay? Anyway, that makes it just easier to see that way. So 3 times 8 is 24, 3 times 1 is 3, plus 2. So that, this side would be 54, and then on this one, if I put in that same 2 for A, right, uh, 12 times 2 is 24. Definitely not equivalent, okay? So same thing over here. You can, you can remove it around if you want. You know, use the commutative property, use the associative property of addition. Um, or, you know, simply look at it, kind of think with your common sense. We've got AP plus 0. We've got AP times 0. Remember, whenever you multiply a number times 0, you're going to get 0, right? And then, but if I'm adding 0, it's going to stay the same number. So this would be AP, and this is going to be 0. So clearly, not equivalent, right? Let's look at the next one. So on this one, we've got 5 plus A plus B. On this one, we've got the 5A plus the 2B, right? looks like one of those distributive properties, and I, I hate to feel like I'm confusing you because I'm doing all different ones, but there's lots of different ways to solve this. But if I were to do distributive property on this one, that would be saying 5 times A and 5 times B, and I would plus those together, right? So 5 times A, 5 times B, and I'd add them together, okay? I can do that, or again, I can simply put in, so, and then if I combine, um, like on this one, Right? I could combine my like terms to see if they look anything alike. So I've got 5a, and I've got 2b, and I've got 3b. Well, if I move my, decimal, my parentheses here, 2b and 3b, they add up to be 5b. So now I've got 5a plus 5b, which looks like the same problem to me. Again, makes it easier for you. Pick a, pick a number. For a, you could plug in a 2, and for b, you could... Plug in a 2 if you want, and, and you could solve it out using order of operation. But this one is definitely equivalent, okay? So I know I kind of confused you. I hope I didn't confuse you too much. There's a lot of different ways that you can do this, but the main thing is, is just getting you to think about those. Are they equivalent? Is it the same number on both sides? Whichever way works for you, I probably showed you about five different ways in this video. You may work with a partner, or you can work alone. Or you can come with me to the back kidney table and I can help you out. All right? Good luck.